In an earlier unit we talked about system families and component families and how component families were standalone objects. Doors and windows are a specific type of component family and that is they are hosted families. By hosted families we mean the components themselves need another element on which to host themselves. So for example if I take a door, so architecture and door Unless I'm over a wall, you'll see that my cursor has a no entry symbol. That's telling me that I can't just place this door anywhere in free space in my model. It will only go onto a wall. So it needs a wall to be hosted in. And as soon as I hover over any of the walls in my model, you can see that Revit is offering me the opportunity to place that door. It's exactly the same with Windows. So if I cancel out my door command, hit Window, get the no entry sign anywhere over the model except when I'm over a wall. I zoom in, I now have the opportunity to place a window on one of these elements. So let's go ahead and place some doors into our model. Architecture menu, remember the build panel at the start there on the left hand side of the ribbon and we've got door. Hit the door command. A few things to note first. The properties palette changes to the currently selected door type. You can go and change that to whatever door type you need. Just have a look at the end of the ribbon menu a button there called Tag on Placement. Towards the end of the course I have a dedicated unit on tags but basically tags are a method of getting some of the parametric data out of the family itself and onto your views. So in this case the door number is contained within the door family and the tag is almost like a little annotation. It will go next to it and pull that data out and put the door number next to the door in this particular view. So we want to create tags every time we place a door, so we'll leave that turned on. If you don't, you just need to click it. it if it's white, it's not active, and if I click again, blue, it is active, so it's gonna create a tag as we place our doors. So I hover over the wall in which I want to place a door, and you can see Revit's offering me the opportunity to place one. Very small movements of my cursor. Revit offers me a different orientation of the door, either opening outwards or opening inwards. Very easy to change that after, which I'm going to show you later. So I'll just click to place. You can see the door has been hosted into the wall. The wall has been cleaned up accordingly and a tag has been created which is displaying the door number, door number one. Let's go ahead and place another door. So I'll just change this to a different type. So one of the double doors. Again, hover over my wall. Click to place. The door gets inserted and it gets its own unique door number, number two in the sequence. So it's following on from the first one. Again, you'll recall from the structural grids and the levels where we can change the name or the reference and Revit will then continue that sequence from there on in. We've just seen how when placing a door, if we're careful with the cursor, we can choose which way the door is going to open into or out of a room. But what if we place the door and it's not in the correct orientation or we change our mind? I just cancel out of adding any more doors. Let's take the door we've got. If we select it, you'll see two controls here. One to hand the door, which side the hinge is on. Click that again 
and another one to flip whether the door opens into or out of a room so by using both controls you can get the door in the, exactly the correct orientation you need you can also use the space bar now with each click of the space bar and I'll do the first one now you will see for every click the door changes orientation and then hands itself so four clicks of the space bar will take you through every permutation that the door can be placed in I briefly talked about door numbering earlier on in the unit I'm just going to go into a little bit more detail now if I go and add some more doors to our model add one in here this is door number four let's just select that door if I click on the door number itself I can edit it directly from here so let's call this door EX1 for external door 1 hit the enter key to confirm that value now let's go back and add additional doors and you'll notice that Revit continues that sequence, that new sequence that we've started now, EX345 and so on. If I go and select any of these doors and look at its parameters or its properties in the properties palette, we look down towards the bottom of the instance parameters, we'll see a parameter there called mark. It's what Autodesk call the door number, the door mark, and there is its value, EX1. So what I want to convey in this unit is that the door number itself, the door reference, is actually a value, a parameter, and its value that's stored against the object, i.e. the door component itself. Revit then uses a tag, and if I'm careful, I'll use a tab key to select just the tag and I can move that tag separately from the door itself the tag is an annotation that pulls that parametric data out of the door family and displays it on the view so just to very briefly recap that there is the door component Part of that door family is its door mark, it's a parameter which can store a value. So the number itself or the door reference is stored against the component and a tag, an annotation family, is used to pull whatever value is stored against that particular parameter and place it or display it next to the component itself. So later on in the course I'll be showing you how to manipulate those tags, how to add tags to families that don't currently have one, how you can customize those tags themselves and create your own to pull any of the parametric data that's stored against any type of Revit component and display that value next to the component itself in a particular view. In the unit on walls, I showed you how to take an existing wall type and create a new type based on it. I'm going to do the same quickly for doors here. So let's take a door we've already got in our model. If I select it, we can take a look at its parameters, its properties in the properties palette. So this is the particular door family. So it's doors underscore internal single and there is its type name so it's got a, a certain type and the type name has been set to display its overall dimensions its size so if we want to have a look at its type properties remember we can edit type and if we take a look down here we will find its height and its width those are its type properties so if we were to alter those values here then all the doors of that type would change in our model we might just have a requirement for another door here 
which is 1500 mil wide so obviously we can't just change this one because they would all change so we're going to need to create a new type a separate one that we can then alter that width without affecting any of these existing doors so just like we did with the walls edit type and remember duplicate give it a new name so I'm going to take that number two off the end and change the name to 1500 by 2110 as the name confirm that that's the type we've got selected in the drop down there for the type properties that's the one we want to edit the values for so if we have a look down here width the width parameter let's change that to 1500 okay and you can see that particular door is of the new type we've just created so if I want to replace that door back there with one of those just go back to door choose the original type and place it and of course with any component in Revit it's very easy just to take an existing one that's in your model select it have a look at its type and then just pick a different type that you want it to be and swap it out so again I've just swapped that one now to the type we've just created just note the type itself's changed but its instance parameters haven't i.e. the door number or the door mark EX2 remains the same it's just the type with the dimensions that have actually changed When you first set Revit up on your computer, it normally installs with a large library of additional components supplied by Autodesk. So if, for example, you want to use additional door families that come in that library, we can load them into our current project quite easily. So if we go to Architecture, Door, and instead of placing one of the door families that is currently loaded into our project we're going to load additional door families into this project that we can then use so I need to go to load family and here is my metric library this will vary depending on where you are the localization of your setup I'm going to go to doors and I'm going to choose external doors and if I single click on the file names I get a thumbnail helps me identify the door I might be interested in so I'm going to pick that particular door family hit open what that does is load that particular door family into this project doesn't necessarily place it into the model that's up to me to do now it does make it the currently selected door in the type selector so all I need to do now is hover over a wall where I want that door to be placed click to place and if I go to a 3d view and we orbit around there we can see the new door family that we've chosen if I just go back to doors again and pull the type selector down just want to go over some of the terminology here we've talked about families and we've talked about types so far the thumbnails and the name with the grey background that is the family and the family name and below each family name are the number of types for that particular family so you can see the family that we've just loaded in here only has two types whereas the family that was in the original project has three types remember we can create additional types once we've got the family into the project we just need to select family in question edit type duplicate 
give it a name. I'll OK that there. So in essence, the new type I've created for this particular family isn't any different from the other type because I didn't change any parameters. But it does demonstrate now that I've got three types for that particular family there. You can see the new type with its name or Revit just added on the number two at the end there to differentiate it. So far in this unit, I've just concentrated on doors and haven't really mentioned windows. That's because in terms of how the tools work in Revit, doors and windows are identical. So if you followed everything that we've done so far with doors, you'll have no problem at all with windows. So to conclude this unit, I just want to show you how to place windows and I'm going to very quickly cover everything that we did with doors but with the window tool just really to demonstrate that it is an identical process. So I've got my walls here, architecture window, notice the ribbon panel, notice the tag on placements exactly the same if you want your windows numbered at the time that you place them into the model. The type selector, pick a family and type. Currently in this project I only have one window family which has a number of types. Just going to pick one of those types for now. Remember windows are also hosted components so I can't just place them anywhere. They've got to be in a wall. Hover over. Again that small movement of the cursor will change the orientation of the window. I'm going to go ahead and place some windows. Notice the windows being numbered just the same as the doors were when we placed those. Cancel out of the window command. Select a window. I can click on the window mark, EW1, and Revit would then follow that sequence for any new windows. If I carefully move that tag out of the way, so we can clearly see the flip controls for the orientation of the window, so just like the doors we can hand it over. This is a symmetrical window so you're not really going to see it when I flip it horizontally but it does in fact flip the component over. Likewise the spacebar will hand it exactly the same as the doors. Loading additional windows into our project to use so architecture, window, the same load family button Obviously this time we're going to go down and find the Windows folder. Find whatever window we're interested in. Open. That brings it into the project. Makes it the currently selected window. We now hover over a wall and we can place those windows into the project. So in terms of how doors and windows work with regards to the tools and their operation, they're exactly the same as each other. And that completes this unit. To get the most out of this training material, please take the complete course online at bimscape.com. Here you will find a complete learning management system that allows you to work through the course at your own pace. Comprehensive written tutorials provide additional information to that found in the training videos. Mark each unit as complete as you finish it and move on to the next. At any point you can return to any of the units you have previously completed to go over the material again. If you'd like to take this course online, please visit www.bimscape.com forward slash Revit for details.